Would you go to a mass where the priest was a cyborg? Yes. Hello and welcome back. I'm Katniss. I was just doing a dramatic pause. I thought you weren't going to introduce yourself today. No. This is the Croak and Crow podcast and I am your boy Spencer Cardia. I already went. I wasn't listening. I'm Katniss. Katniss Everdeen? Mm Mm-hmm. And this here is Frank looking good, living life. Summer's over. Yeah. And that's okay. It's not really over, but it's over. Everyone stop stop it. Stop going to the beach. It's over. <laughs> um, no, it's it's September now. Second it's Thursday. Second sep- second po- sep- it, September second. Yeah, it's the second podcast we've done in September. Does it feel a little different? Yesterday I was outside. I felt a little tinge in the air. It's September 2nd. It felt good. It's World Coconuts Day. <laughs> yeah? Do you like coconuts? No. I I don't like coconuts, but I've also never had like a real coconut or real coconut water. You have, because you lived in Trinidad. Maybe as a baby. Yeah, as a baby, I used to give you coconut water because it's su- supposedly and probably proven to be extremely healthy. Yeah, Um. I don't know. I I just don't like the coconut flavor. Um, Is co- coconut water taste coconut flavor? Yeah. No? Is that... You're just shaking your head like that's a hot take. Tastes like dirty dishwater. Oh. Not that I've ever tasted dirty Well, that's all it is, right? It's just like where the coconut okay, holds so on to its water. I'm American. Oh. Hi, American. <laughs> I'm Spencer. I'm East Coast Northern City girl. Um, my experience with coconut came flaked and sugared in a bag for baking. Yes. Irish potatoes. Gang, Irish- gang. <laughs> I went to Trinidad in the Caribbean, the West Indies, and I was introduced to a coconut, coconut, coconut. Mic went a little up. No, just, yeah, you weren't really talking. I was introduced to a coconut, coconut. Um, okay, so first time, if you see um, the, the videos and, and the guy has a green coconut and he's using a machete yeah. to chop it open. Quack, quack, quack. So I thought it was going to taste like delicious coconut flavored water. Yeah. It does not. No. It is a green coconut. It hasn't formed that white hard inside. Um, the, uh, the meat. The meat that they grate for what the coconut we're used to. But also, once again, it's not even sweet. We, uh, we, had, we had sugar. So the green coconut, that stuff that turns into the white meat yeah. is a jelly. Ew. It's coconut jelly. Gross. They'll take the, uh, the husk and they'll actually scrape it. Do you want some jelly? No. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Yeah. But it, everyone likes the water. And so they would literally cut off the top, put a straw in it and give it to you. Some people don't even need a straw. You just drink it. I tasted it. I was horrified. Mm. Okay. At that time, America didn't, wasn't selling. You know how they, now you get it everywhere. Vita coconut water. America wasn't selling it. No, have you had that? Yeah. I hated it. Is that at least more coconut flavory? No. Oh, so it tastes the same. It tastes the same. So it does, they, they stay true. So when I was when that when I was there and um, America didn't sell it and and um, we were like oh wow like I wonder if America would like this but it spoils very very quickly uh, so like no you could never export it apparently they figured something out yeah they're able to do it now science yeah um, people love coconut water and like I said it has tons of benefits yeah I hate it. On World Coconut Day, we hate coconuts, okay? Um, I hate it, okay? The other thing is they're very, 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 very hard to open. Even the, you know, the the brown, hairy ones? Yeah. They're the ones that have the white meat inside? Yeah. Almost impossible. You could throw it off a building. It's not going to break. Yeah, it kills people. You know how many people die of coconuts every year? It's a oh. number. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, You can, like, put it in the oven and then you can, it'll crack easier. I don't know. But it's all really, really, really hard. But... The same way that makes it so hard to get a human to get to it and eat it and work for it also is the reason why it plants itself freely around the world. Because it doesn't really have someone eating it the whole time. True. That's true too. But um, the fact is that there is an air pocket in there and that's why it floats. Yeah. And it won't take water on. Oh. So it can float across the sea, land on a shore, a deserted desert island. Yeah plant itself and there you'd have a coconut tree huh now does it like i was just saying oh it must be hard for animals to eat does the coconut have a natural predator 
I don't think so. I feel like something it had to evolve to eat coconuts. Eat coconuts? Like it's like a monkey or something? Like throw it on the rocks or something? Um, monkeys actually there's a there's an ethical dilemma, I think in Indonesia, I'm not sure where, they use monkeys to pick the coconuts. Oh. So other places Monkey would, labor. Yeah. Would huh. use would use like a cherry picker or something. Yeah. But um there's a huge like they're literally trained for it. And then some people say, How dare you? And then other people say, We've always had animals work for us. Yeah. So. Yeah, monkeys are weird, man. They're so smart. I know. Like, I was watching this monkey at a zoo. It might have been a grill or something. And, like, uh, sunglasses fell into the cage. And he literally picks them up. He looks at them. He puts them on. No, you're lying. And he's walking around with these sunglasses on. Like, no, that must have been so amazing. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the video was like, this is wild. But at the same time, it's like, they're not normal animals. Right. Normal animals, like, will, like, look at something and probably break it. Like, yeah. they're thinking. They have a brain. I think everything has a brain. But you know what I mean? Yeah. They can like deduce. They can problem solve. That's amazing. Planet of the Apes is, is no joke, man. It's scary. Scary thought. Not that scary. You say that now. Watch. Once Elon Musk's dropping all of these cyborg robots, it's going to be a battle between us, the robots, and the monkeys. You got to pick a side. Whose side are you picking? I'm going to go with the monkeys. I don't know. No? You're not going to? You see that Elon Musk has these robot people? No, I didn't see that. Tesla, the company, which is weird because Elon Musk has a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. um, And Tesla is a car company, but I guess they're using the technology to make um, autonomous humanoids. It's like iRobot. Yeah, well, there must be so much um, they've learned with AI, artificial intelligence, for the car... That they want to, they also want to make something else out of well, it. Well, yeah, because I mean, the car is self driving. So the right. idea is if you're making a humanoid, be able to real time problem solve. Also, I think, as you know, Elon Musk does the SpaceX. And back in the day, talk about ethical dilemmas. When you're working on your rockets, you're sending up dogs and monkeys first. Cause right. we, but this way, you could literally send humanoids mm. to walk on Mars that, and then come back and then say, like, okay, well, those robots didn't die. That's going to be weird in the future when there's like AI robots mm-hmm. and the ethical dilemmas with them. Like, you got to think, you know, like vegans now compared to 100 years ago. Yeah. Now we care so much about animals, which is good, which is great. But what happens when, we, when robots get smart enough that we're like, be nice to the robots? Yeah. It's going to be a whole, it's going to be another whole like civil rights movement for the robots. Yeah. Ro- like robots deserve rights. Then there'll be the moral thing of, hear me now, so this is a spiritual podcast, and I was going to tie this back into spirituality. I wasn't, but now I am. Once you get a robot advanced enough mm-hmm. that it can it can have emotion and have all this, when, do, what is the, the definition of having a, like being a spiritual person and stuff? I don't know. Like, can we make a robot be spiritual? But in which case... It sounds crazy and like, no, that's nuts, you know, but let me tell you I'm listening. that um, we have always, humans have always blessed inanimate objects. There's recently, you know, school starting back uh, right now. So they have the blessing of the backpacks and they have the blessing of the, um, of, of so many things. I can't even remember, but yeah. just pick one and, and they bless it so would they would they start out just blessing the cyborgs you know but yeah but then like what if this like one cyborg start having these internal dialogues of what's the purpose to all this would you go to a mass where the priest was a cyborg yes so okay yeah why not like what if what if they they digitally analyze the Bible and preach it to you. Like I'm talking way down. But how about like when the transformation of the of the bread and wine and it, like you think a cyborg is doing that? Yeah, maybe I, I don't he know. He hasn't taken his vows. It'll be kind of maybe maybe I don't want to go to robot church. But I I can see it. Yeah. In the future. They already have these AI things. Um, that all like they'll do it with like public figures and stuff where. You run it through this AI software of like a hundred videos and and dialogue, and they can like make a speech, a unique speech or something, based on all of the analytics they said of like you normally talk about this, you normally and it's like brand new. Oh yeah. So, 
I don't know. I'm ready to go at war with the robots. A second ago, I was like, should we bless them? Now, I, you know what? Now, here's the other thing. War is never the answer. Here's the other thing. This is this was controversial Thursday. With these AI robots that we're trying to create, and we want them to be like humanoids. We want them to... Are we playing God? No. Everything we do in creation, God, God's a creator and he want, and he made us creators. So whenever people say like, you're playing God, you're playing God. You know, if you turn, if you turn, if you, if you, uh, what's it called? Um, breed a peach and a plum and you get a prom or something, you know, it's all creation and, it, and, and nothing happens without God's approval. Nothing happens without his knowledge. Um, are you playing God? We could never play God. That's a funny joke. It's like playing mommy and daddy. And I have a mommy's high heels. And look at me. I'm mommy. And it's like you're billions of years away from being mommy, little brat. <laughs> okay. That's fair enough. Um, Don't scare the people anyways. Yeah, I know. Everyone watch out. There's going to be a war. Us versus the robots versus uh, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah. Um, Team monkeys. Well. They're going to win the war. The- Humans will fight with each other. The robots will see the biggest threat as the humans. And so, boom, boom. We can dress boom, up boom. like monkeys then. Yeah, and you can like live in the trees. You know what? I just remembered something about a monkey. I just remembered something about a monkey. There is a monkey in a zoo, and I'm trying, I don't even know what country, but this woman just got banned from the zoo. Yeah. Because she's too close to the monkey. Did you see it? No. Oh. What do you mean too close? Well, she can't touch him. He's in the enclosure, but she's been visiting him for four years. I don't know if she comes every day or what, but listen. I'm listening. They have formed such a relationship that the other monkeys are kind of shunning him. Oh, it's like you're one of them. Yeah. And so the zoo people were like, you got to stop coming. Because oh, that's cute. They should just give her the monkey. But she can live in the enclosure, but she can't just have the monkey. Why? Her pal? Her monkey pal? Spencer, you're too young to remember when a lady with a monkey pal got her whole entire face ripped off and she came on Oprah. Without a face? She she had on a big hat and a big veil because um, we would be too horrified to see her. Listen. And guess what? Her neighbor who tried to save her died. Are you serious? Yeah. She had a monkey her whole life. Oh. It was her monkey friend. He He slept in her bed. Oh, really? Monkey friend, monkey friend. One day something like spooked him or something happened. He ripped her face off, but she lived. What happened to the monkey? Can't remember. I feel like it's one of the stories where she's like, don't be mad at the monkey. I know, but I think... She was mad at the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they just killed it anyway. Killed her neighbor. Yeah, but it's a monkey. Monkey, All right, see listen, monkey, do. The, take right. the takeaway is don't help your neighbor. If she's screaming, help, help, my monkey's eating my face off. I would never... I'm sorry, neighbor. You know, love your neighbor. This is a spiritual podcast. I don't know if I'd get in between. I told you I ran away from my friend when a bird was chasing her. I think if I see a I fully sized gorilla. Yeah. A chimpanzee. Yeah, I think you know how strong they are? I think it was a chimpanzee. Chimpanzee. Ch- chimpanzee me out of there. That's what I say. Now that I think about it, I think the friend knew the monkey and had come over to, to be friendly, but the monkey took it as a threat or something and that the woman was trying to help the neighbor. I don't know. But anyways. Never go toe to toe with the monkey. And that's why. That's why. So you're saying, oh, a monkey tore, tore a human's face off. Are you ready to join Team Monkey when it's going to be the monkeys versus the robots versus the humans? Yeah. That, in that the way. Present it in that way. Yes. And you can hide in the trees. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the robots won't even know they're a threat. You could. Pro- I think monkeys and the robots can live more in harmony than the humans and the robots. Hear me now. I'm going to start learning how to speak monkey. They can do sign language. They so can. Sign they can language. And they can paint. So can elephants. Okay. We're crazy right now. So it's. Yeah. The, it's, this is like a Friday podcast. It is. It's the end of the year for the. um <coughs> For the Mayan calendar. For the Jews. Mm. Um, It's the, the end of the year. Um, Monday. Who changed the year? Because I know the Chinese have their year. The Hebrew the, the, calendar's the different. The Hebrew calendar. I think a lot of calendars I think are it different. Was, I think it was like Julius Caesar or something. Um, One of these Roman guys. Well, the Hebrew calendar, um, we're in the season of, I'll say the name's wrong. Who cares? Elul. Elul. E-L-U-L. Elul. We're in the season, um, and which is the end. So Monday coming is going to be Rosh Hashanah, and that's going to be that's New Year? the New Year for them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this time of year, 
you, I don't know, get all your ducks in a row, do a review of your life. I don't know. I do know. That's what you do. But also, it's time to get your tefillin and your mezuzah checked. (laughs) What does that mean? By an accredited scribe to ensure that they are in good condition and fit to use. So the... um, Tefillin? Tefillin? Tefillin. Tefillin. Is a set of small black leather boxes containing scrolls of parchment inscribed with verses from the Torah. They are worn by observant adult Jews during weekday morning prayers. Have you ever seen them? No. Do they wear them as a bracelet? There's, it's literally like a box. Like when you look it up, you'll be like, "Oh wow, it's the one, it's it's the super observant yeah. ones with the curls and the orthodox fringe." Um, yeah, there are boxes. I never really knew what the boxes were. I don't think. No. <laughs> What's like that movie? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Scrolls of parchment. Scrolls of parchment. And the mezuzah. You do know this one. This is the decorative case on the door. The, yeah, oh yeah. And you touch it or touch um, it. kiss it or something. And um da 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 same thing. It has Hebrew verses from the Torah and um, And how like what's good like what, what are you getting checked? Like, oh you need a new Tazilla. Yeah, I guess. Your box is a little grungy. Yeah, to ensure that they are in good condition and fit for use. I don't know. If only we had a scribe. If only we had a scrap. Maybe uh, we'll have a... Why don't we ever have any guests on our show? Where'd that come from? Oh, a scribe? Yeah. Um, It's hard because it's because if we had someone serious, we're not very serious. If we had someone silly, we You're were all... You're taking away... Like when Avalon did a podcast and she was just making jokes? No. Everyone it's not loved, a joke. Everyone loved when Avalon was on. No, I just meant like it's not really a comedy show. So like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, sometimes people write comments and they say, like, good guest. And I'm like, I wonder which one they thought was the guest. That's a good question. Me, I guess. Because you introduce first, you have your full No, name. I don't I don't think so. Because um, I think I would be the guest. Because I, although I talk more, I do introduce it. Yeah. But what I was going to say is you usually post questions and then I'll, I'll, I'll keep going on tangents. True. Like, Who's the guest? Frank's the real guest. We're both guests too, Frank. Be our guest. Be our guest. To do the test. What's that from? That's from uh, Beauty and the Beast. You're correct. All right. So we will now commence the Operation next. Desert Storm. It's Walk Through Thursday, guys. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is going on, fellas and ladies and people that are in between? Um, today is walk through Thursday, and what we do is we open up the Bible. Bible's open, and we find a verse, any verse, pick a verse, any verse, and we break it down. Mm-hmm. We slow it down. Mm. We, what's another something down? I don't know. We shut it down. <laughs> And we, uh, we, yeah, we, sl- we, we look at it, look at it word for word. Even bigger than that, we'll start. We'll start with, with, with okay. paragraph by paragraph. Okay. We'll go down sentence by sentence. Yes. Line by line. Yeah. Word by word. Mm. Letter by letter. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And yeah, it's a, it's it's a way to to not just steamroll past prayers and verses, but to think about it with us, with you, with Frank, with God. So without- <laughs> hopefully not that order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, after Frank, he's our little um, cyborg, isn't he? Oh, uh, imagine when he's a- autonomous. Him. Yeah, uh, I would totally turn him autonomous. We have like lasers in his eyes, and we could call him automatus. Automatus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be kind of scary if he's like. Remember all those times where you hit me in the face? <gasps> he's like he wouldn't say that. He would say thank you for taking me out of the box. Thank you for. For making me a part of something in this world. You say that now. What, what if he's like, finally, I'm free. Well, I remember all my Krav Maga um, lessons. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's sort of what I was doing in that uh, last Friday's podcast. I was showing him, hey, if ever you become autonomous, just know I can get you in a rear naked choke. Okay. Spencer, get down. Spencer, Spencer, you're going to take the table. Spencer, get down. Spencer, get down. Rear naked choke? That's what it's called. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, like naked, not meaning you're naked, but like... 
I don't know no why they call it. There's no frills to it. it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they call it it, but right. it's when you're behind someone's back. I don't know how to do it. Yet. Rosh Hashanah is a Jewish holiday. It's happening on Monday. Yes. And um, they read different verses during that prayer day. It's a, it's a serious prayer day. It's um it's a serious holiday, rather. It's one of the high holy days. They don't have any dropping of the balls. Along with Yom Kippur now. Um, and an important Bible verse, a Bible, more than a verse important bible thing for rosh hashanah is leviticus 23 23 to 32 okay it is the festival of trumpets and it's talking about um the day of atonement which is what what we talked about rosh hashanah is when you say please um please forgive me for the nutty things i've been doing all year and um, a little whack (laughs) the past year and you blow a shofar yeah, you blow a shofar during. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, you combined New Year with yeah, Russia with the shofar, and you have Old Lang Syne on a shofar. <laughs> Very niche. <laughs> um, so we could look at the, we could look at yes, the yes. Let's look at it. Part of the Bible that is focused about Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. I only printed one paper. That's fine. Wait, you want me to read all of this? Pro- probably not. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to read all of it. Okay, good. Well, this is great. Uh, to listen to the to the word of God alone is a blessing. So even if we don't walk it apart. Um, I always say, well, you don't like when I say that because we don't tear it apart or walk it apart, pull it apart. We we happily, lazily, lazy river it. Yeah, we um we let it. What is it when you you wash over us? Marinate. We marinate. Oh, we marinate in, this. in the verse. Awesome. The festival of trumpets. The Lord said to Moses, "Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord." Um, the day of atonement. The Lord said to Moses. The tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves, and present a food offering to the Lord. Is Rosh Hashanah where they don't eat? Do they fast on yeah. that day? Maybe. I don't know. What do you mean when they don't eat? Are you thinking of Ramadan? Yeah. Oh, that's Muslim, but there's lots of fasting in all the religions. Do not do any work on that day because it is a day of atonement. When atonement is made for you before the Lord your God, those who do not deny themselves on that day must be cut off from their people. I will destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall not. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. It is a day of Sabbath rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. From the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening, you are to observe your Sabbath. So there's that. There's that. And uh, all the Jewish people will be going over this um excerpt from the bible from well yeah they call it the bible right the torah they called it the torah yeah um on monday um you know what it reminds me of our our our, what was the name of our podcast where we talked about the jubilee remember it was like in in the 50th 50th year celebration because it was all about don't work celebrate i don't know if they're saying celebrate there are they well they're saying sacrifice don't work and um, but, it, but it's funny, it's this forced rest. Yeah. But I mean, and so what we talked about in the Jubilee podcast was the importance of this and to not be so much taken as um, rest or like what's it called, you know, follow this order. But it's like as a reminder of a just a, a, a some kind of, of time in your life where you're like, let me just reflect spiritually because we're right. all... We're all in this hamster wheel, you know, just going, going, going. And it's like, I don't have time. I don't have time. And this is like, no, sit down. You have time. Yeah. You can do it. Because sometimes you need to be told. Right. Like, it, like you ever see someone running around and they're anxious and it's like, whoa, it's like, sit down, breathe. I think that's what this is. I know. And I like, I love it for that because you don't find that anywhere. Mm-mm. You don't find that parents don't force their children to rest on you know, bedtime. But you used to force me to rest. Well, man, I'm better than most people. <laughs> Bedtime parents want to rest. That's why they do it, you know. But no, yes, I did force you to rest. Um, work 
doesn't yeah. force you to rest or no you know um they'd work you to the bone if they could yeah so you you you, you equate working is good working is the sacrifice working yeah. is yes. you know yes not lazy it's it's not easy to just stop just to stop doing anything being your own thoughts for a little bit yeah that's that's hard and yeah i, I do agree most people think that working is the whatever you just said <laughs> <laughs> um okay so to to walk through it the festival of trumpets they're saying um first day of seventh month so it's not going to be july it's the hebrew calendar and those things never really translate easily to people who just want to walk through it um but it does talk about a sacred assembly assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts yeah um so Again, is a it's a not a contradiction, but like you know, rest is quiet and peaceful. But this is saying no, we're going to bless the trumpets yes. to announce to you know wake you up to calm you down. Question mark. Well, yeah, no, I think it, it like we this was another thing we talked about in the jubilee of um, the rest isn't a punishment and it's not a, like mm-hmm. a a everyone everybody stop. It's like. You're you're celebrating the time of reflection. You're celebrating the time of rest. It's not like, here we go again. Everyone go to sleep. It's right. like, hey, let's celebrate not celebrating. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, and to remind people that we're Christian. Yes, ma'am. This is a Jewish holiday. Yes, ma'am. But it's a Bible we share. Yes, and it is. Again, not getting tied up with the seventh month or even um even the word israelites the bible is for all people god is for all people yes. so we we don't skip over this in in our churches and all the, even in you know we're catholic but the presbyterian uh is it pres- protestant churches yeah the protestant churches um so yes it's definitely definitely a holiday they have decided to really focus on and um make a very important yeah um in their religion but it's the Bible. It's we can all read it. Yeah. So why doesn't everyone just go out and rest? Even if it's not for a full day or on a certain month, just for maybe 10 minutes. You might not realize when was the last time you were alone. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they live with people, they go to work. It's Or if they're not, they're driving somewhere. Just sit in your own thoughts and have some reflection time on this Rosh Hashanah evening. <laughs> well that's next week but well, so you have time to realize no, how you're gonna uh, get what i'm in. saying is and i just said it that that when when other people read it that it doesn't have to be just the rosh hashanah well that's what i'm saying i'm just saying like, oh, right. like, this is the rosh hashanah episode i'm just saying why not do it now but also whenever Right. It's not the Rosh Hashanah episode. It's the Leviticus 23, 23, 32 episode. Rosh Hashanah episode will be tomorrow. Oh, this is a Rosh Hashanah <laughs> week. Yeah, because it's the end of Elul. <laughs> Elul? 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 Maybe. Who cares? It's the end of summer. Summer's over. Who cares? So uh, anything else you like on there? Um, let's see. It says, uh, since we're walking through it, Day of Atonement, when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. Um, oh, yeah. So re- the day must be cut off from their, those who do not deny themselves will be cut off from their people. Um, again, it doesn't have to mean you are being outcast. You're being struck down to hell. You are being o- ostracized or. Um, All those big words. Yeah. Whatever the Amish people do to, you know, how they. Excommunication. Yeah. Um, Excommunicado. <laughs> it just means that you are losing, you are losing out. Because yes. all these people are coming together at this time yeah. in, in a group effort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you said. Shunned. Shunned. I was trying to think of what the Amish call Shame. it. Shame. Yeah, Catholics call it excommunication, but the Amish call it shunned. Shunned is when you, you do what they don't want you to do. So you have now become shunned. If you That's don't get crazy. If you don't get physically kicked off the farm, yeah. you can eat at a different table and we're going to act like you're not there. Uh, I kind of would like that. I wish I got shunned from this house. Um, <laughs> just kidding. All right, guys. That was the Rosh Hashanah episode. Um, we'll be back tomorrow for the Leviticus 23, 23, 32 episode. Um, yeah. So, guys, get, take like five minutes by yourself. Go in the bathroom. 
or something. Turn the lights off. Look in the mirror. Say Bloody Mary three times. Spencer. <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow for a uh, fun Friday. Um, go out. Be blessed. Go bless some other people. Say, hey, God bless you. Even, I, even when... I, I didn't sneeze. I'm out of here. Peace.